My first interest in preservation probably came as a child where I didn't know anything about preservation. The word wasn't there, but I watched my own hometown city, Durham, go through urban renewal, where my father bought a car, got torn down, where I went for a haircut, got torn down. So that was probably a beginning point. And then when I went to do a graduate program in city planning, I took a preservation course. And I always joke that I caught the disease in that course. Preservation in North Carolina dates back to 1939, and no, I was not there when it was founded. Well, I was really lucky when I took the job as a 25-year-old, first job out of law school. I had a mentor who was available and so helpful. I'm passionate about thinking about preservation in its relationship to real estate. We're the ones who look at a property and figure out how are we going to save that property? What's wrong with this property and how do we fix it? And can we uh, get the various pieces of real estate puzzle in alignment? I did a book called Buying Time for Heritage back in 2007. It's about real estate is the name of the game in preservation and how to try to save an endangered property. Through the years, I've been passionate about the use of revolving funds in preservation. And it's not a bank account, it's a knowledge account. It's understanding what's going on with property and figuring out how to solve those problems. We have probably been involved in 25 to 35 school buildings that have been converted into affordable housing, often for seniors. We have directly been involved in the creation of over 2,000 units of affordable housing in historic buildings. Another thing we've worked on through the years I've been really proud of has been the work with mills and mill villages. Working class property. Well, my father worked in the tobacco company, so it was a very thrilling thing for me to see the company where he worked get preserved and turn into a much bigger employer than the tobacco company ever was. It was a $200 million renovation. It really changed my own downtown. One of the things we've done pretty well in North Carolina is we got state tax credits pretty early and we've been able to hold our state tax credits in place for really 30 years so far. We've had well in excess of $3 billion spent through the tax credit program in North Carolina. Preservation North Carolina is one of the few statewide that have been involved in museums. We in the preservation community have some great opportunities using museum properties to get people in the door and tell them a full message about our society and how it works. Whether you're talking about race, gender, sexual orientation, it all comes through with these buildings. From the beginning of my career, I've thought it's really important that we try to broaden preservation to include all sorts of different people. I hope my legacy is institutional, not personal, in the sense of, I hope that the work that we have done with Preservation North Carolina will continue to be done for years and years.